Today we're going to take a trip to an abandoned island off the coast of Nagasaki called Gunkanjima or Battleship Island. Officially named Hashima, Gunkanjima got its nickname when a newspaper journalist referred to its unique shape as resembling a battleship. Although quite lifeless now, just 50 years ago, Gunkanjima was the most densely populated place in all of Japan. With nine times the population density of Tokyo at the time, it was bustling with people as a major coal mining complex during the Meiji period. Gaining worldwide attention with the release of the Google Street View video, which you guys should all watch if you haven't, Gunkanjima is currently under consideration to be included in UNESCO's World Heritage List. Yes, I'm finally uploading the Gunkanjima video! Minasan konnichiwa, Chika desu! Hey guys, it's Chika. Welcome to the Japan Ghost channel. For those of you who watch my other channel, you guys might have seen the video. It was like a trailer-like video for my channel that I uploaded last year. That was actually a TV commercial. So last autumn, I was part of this YouTube campaign. YouTube helped me promote my channel. I was on TV. I had billboards all over Tokyo and I was in magazines. It was really, really crazy. I still can't believe it happened. The reason why I bring this up is because there's a scene in that commercial where I'm standing on the deck of a boat uh, with Gunkanjima behind me, filming myself selfie style, talking to you guys through my camera like I always do. And everyone has been wondering, so where is that video? This one, the one you're taking with your camera. We've seen the commercial, but we haven't seen the video you uploaded. That's because I haven't uploaded it until now. So today is my last day here in Nagasaki. All my relatives are here. We're all gonna go on a boat together and go see the battleship island. Are you guys ready? Okay, we're getting on. Here's the boat. Battleship Island! I can't believe that like 40 years ago there used to be 5,000 people living on that island. Can you believe that? Coal was discovered on the island in the early 1800s, but it wasn't until the Meiji period that industrial mining began. As Japan tried to grow its economy to catch up with the West, expanding transportation, making machinery, building infrastructure, production of fuel as well as steel was extremely important, both of which heavily relied on coal. The government strongly encouraged development of coal mines and in 1890, Mitsubishi bought Gunkanjima and began drilling. With that came availability of jobs which attracted thousands of people to the island and before you knew it, Gunkanjima was the most densely populated city in all of Japan. In order to accommodate this rapidly growing population, they used slag from the coal mines to reclaim land. The island that you see now is actually three times its original size. Building up was the other solution. But with so much exposure to harsh winds, rain, and sea breeze, they needed something more durable than wooden structures to avoid rapid corrosion of the buildings. Which explains why Gunkanjima is home to Japan's first ever multi-story building made with reinforced concrete. In 1959, this 16-acre island had over 5,200 people living on it. I say that, but I have no idea what 16 acres is like. So let's put it into perspective. Take an Olympic-sized swimming pool, just because I used to swim. 50 meters long, 25 meters wide. Imagine 110 people swimming in it. 
110 people, that's pretty crowded. The island had everything you would ever need. They had a hospital, a post office, hair salons, pachinko parlor, shrines, temples, a pool, public baths, schools, obviously. The only three things they didn't have because of lack of space were parks, cemeteries, and crematories. But other than that, they had it all. Our tour guide told us that the workers on the island were making more than bankers in Nagasaki. Merchants would come sell their goods and all the expensive things sold out first. Almost 100% of the households on the island had the three major appliances of the time. TVs, washing machines, and refrigerators. To put that into perspective, only 7.8% of households in all of Japan had TVs, 20.2% had washing machines, and only 2.8% had refrigerators. Compared to that, almost 100% of the households on Gunkanjima had these luxuries. I was watching the news the other day where they were interviewing former residents of Gunkanjima and I was really surprised to hear what the wife had to say. It was an older couple and the wife was like, oh, it was such a wonderful time. I wish I could go back. When you hear the name battleship and you see the cold cement blocks all deteriorating away and crumbling away and the rusted steel frameworks and the unmaintained wilderness that's just growing out of the buildings, you just don't really picture this paradise-like place, like heaven on earth. But it really was like that for some of the people. They lived really well, they had money, they had everything they needed. But of course, all good things have to come to an end. And in 1979, Mitsubishi shut down the coal mines. And as petroleum took over as the major source of fuel, on April 20th, the last group left the island leaving Gunkanjima as the ghost island that it is now. And I wish that the story could end here. I could introduce this cool looking island in Nagasaki that has this paradise-like history, but there's a little bit more to it. While it was like paradise for some, for others, it was completely the opposite. The people who worked in the actual coal mines, they risked their lives every day in very dangerous working conditions. To them, Gunkanjima wasn't paradise at all. There's another nickname for Gunkanjima, which is called Jigokuto, which means Hell Island. Four to five workers in the mines died every month from the dangerous working conditions. Some of the workers were Korean and Chinese immigrants, and there's a lot of information on their experience on the island, which is completely different than those who are calling it paradise. There are stories on how they were mistreated. I have no idea to what extent the information is accurate on either side. I think that the important thing is for us to know that there's always more to it. There's always another point of view. I'm glad that I did enough research, I looked into it enough to know that. Who's right, who's wrong, I don't think that's what it's about. I think it's just different. I kind of wanted to give a neutral overview to let you guys know that there is this cool looking island off the coast of Nagasaki called Gunkanjima. It played a very significant role in the industrialization of Japan and it helped Japan's economy grow during the Meiji period. From the Japan standpoint, that's a very positive thing. But of course, there is a negative aspect to it. It's got a lot of history and depending on who you ask, there's gonna be a different story. And that's the fact that I wanted to share with you guys. I hope that you guys were able to get something out of this video. I definitely got a lot out of making it. Doing a lot of research on Gunkanjima gave me a lot to think about. So I'm glad I was able to share this with you. Hopefully you guys will get to see more of my Nagasaki trip that I took last year, as well as uh, Osaka, Hokkaido, and Shodoshima. I have so much footage, so many things I want to share with you guys, but I'm just so anal when it comes to editing that I just can't do it. I am trying to get on a weekly schedule, so wish me luck, and I will see you guys again soon. Bye! Oh, if you guys want to do some further reading on Gunkanjima, check out the description of the video for links to some interesting articles that I found. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon.